please keep putting your names in the chat so we can see where all the people are from. Appreciate that. Okay, before retirement, Kathy was a staff scientist at the U.S. National Library of Medicine. She worked on the pro, their PubMed and PubMed Central teams and led the Link Out Project and coordinated the PMC International Program. But fortunately, she asked me about working with uh, Research for Life at one of the Medical Library Association meetings, and it's been a great productive interaction. Kathy is a member of the Research for Life Capacity Development Committee. She's been a key member of the Publishing and Research Communication Task Force. This task force initially focused on the need for Research for Life training to expand beyond the scope of using the program's resources. And she is one of the key people involved in creating the six Research for Life re six research cycle webinars in 2022 and the subsequent two short courses focusing on writing slash publishing a research paper and funding. But today she'll go back to her roots and focus on PubMed and the updates during the past 18 months. And now I turn it over to Kathy and her slides, but a lot of this will be a demo. All right, thank you very much, Lenny, for the kind introduction. By the way, it's PRC, Publishing Research Communication Webinar Series and PRC Short Courses. Doesn't matter. Today, we're talking about PubMed, which is a topic that I, I loved. And because I do believe PubMed is a fabulous database, not because I worked there for so long, it's because I worked there for so long, I know how good are they, how good is the product and uh, how good are the teams. And uh, I, uh, as I said, I did a, uh, PubMed came out with a very, is a new interface in 2020. And that in May, 2020, it switched to the, May, uh, the new interface. And then in July, 2020, I did a webinar in Research for Life webinar for, um, for you all. And uh, since three years has gone by, and then uh, it's time to share the update to refresh your memory and highlight the changes so that you can continue to use PubMed efficiently. Okay, so today's outline, the webinar will be about 75 minutes, if not less. Um, I'll give about a, a 30 minutes presentation then followed by a demo session to illustrate the points covered in the presentation because I found it's better this way, go back and forth. Uh, the slides will be available to you. The slide has a lot, a lot of links, which is really the foundation for you to take it back and then study more uh, at when you you know when the thing is finished. So I also will cover the in a demo, I will also will cover the question some of you provide in the registration. Thank you. And uh and then afterwards will be a QA session. So so 75 minutes max, but then we can flexible the from there. And so please put your question in the QA box and um then Lenny will uh, monitor the Q&A box and then we'll answer questions in the open session. So again, today's recording, uh, today's session's recording and slides will be shared in a few days in the Research for Life webinar uh, session. So to set the stage, what is PubMed? Um, PubMed is a database and search platform or citation and abstract. It is not a full text database. It's just citation and abstract. Um, it is of, uh, for biomed. The scope is for biomedical and life sciences literature produced by the National Center for Biotechnology Information at the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Um, it has over 36 million citations now. Just change it, but it hasn't updated the interface yet. It still says 35, but it just changed uh, over the weekend, last weekend to 36. And the growth rate is tremendous. The 1.7 million record added, added each, each year. And um, the records, the citation record and abstract records are all always have linked 
not always, almost always have links to food tax at PMC, uh, which is a sister program uh, in NCBI and NLM, and also links to publisher site. Uh, has been used by many, many millions of user and conducting over 7 million searches per day. And in addition, it also uh, used by many other uh, databases, uh, literature databases or other information databases to pull up the record through APIs, uh, more than almost 4 million API calls. So why PubMed is so important? Um, it's because it has, it has a very rich history. Uh, PubMed as a searching platform uh, was available freely on internet since 1997s, where scholarly journals start growing on going online. To use uh, what makes PubMed really special, it's a superb content, I want to say superb content which stem from a long history of careful curation. In 1879, the Library of Surgeon General's Office in the US, now the, the US National Library of Medicine, began publication of a monthly index to medical li uh, periodical literature of the world under the title Index Medicus. This content was published under different names throughout the years, preceded, um, the publication history um, in the first resident reference listed here in this slide. In 1971, citation from 1966 onwards were put in, will put online in the mainframe and subsequently available in CD-ROM as Metlers online or simply Metline. Citation from 1946 to 65 Five were added in Medline in 1996. Older citation uh, were added over time because of the project like content digitization. So currently the, the span of PubMed time span is from 1781 through 2024 now <laughs> because we have ahead of print. So we have it ahead of time. So what is in PubMed? People also ask, uh, actually some of you asked already during registration. So um, PubMed is not equal to Medline, but the, largest com but the largest component of PubMed is Medline. It is a collection of citation for more than 5,200 peer review journal. Citation are indexed, uh, Medline citation are indexed with an NLM medical subject heading to facilitate retrieval of relevant content of your search topic. Medline has been the database to go to for biomedical and life sciences research study practice and even for the general topic. Uh, besides Medline, PubMed also contains citation from two NCBI uh, literature databases PubMed Central, PMC, and books. Kathy, we so, have a question for you that is relevant. How often new publications are added to Medline? Daily, weekly, question mark. Uh, publication, uh, it's a very fluid question. It's very complicated. Um, <laughs> let me finish. I want the whole question okay. to the end. Please, yes. Uh, because I'm, we're talking about it actually right now. Uh, Medline makeup of 85 of PubMed citation. Journal are selected to be indexed in Medline by NIH Advisory Committee of Outside Ex Expert. It's called Literature Selection Technical Review Committee, Listric. And the selection rate is about 12 to 15% of the journals apply. And they hold three review per year. So one is processed and they and they uh, want to select that they are ready to go as long as the uh the publisher ready to send it. So journal are added throughout the year. Then that is one process in PubMed, which is Medline. Three times selection a year, and that means there's three free periods of entering to the PubMed. Uh, okay. Um Medline also accepts non-English journal 
In fact, 13% of the PubMed citations are from non-English article. This article have translated title and English abstract where appropriate. So you can limit your search in articles language filter sidebar in PubMed. So for you in particular, you will be interested to use that. And the rest of the content of PubMed comes from PMC and books. So PMC, uh, also we'll call PubMed Central, was established in 2000. It's a free full text archive of bio biomedical and life sciences journal, whereas book is a database of selected three online books and document. They both have selection process for the content to be included in their database to make sure that scientific merits and technical competency of the publication. And uh, PMC, uh, the selection process is hosted about four or five times a year. And again, once it's selected, it will go in. So for through that round, um, and, and by the way, the time frame between uh, PubMed list, district selection, uh, MedLine selection and PMC selection is not the same. So you can say like three time on pump uh, and MedLine and four or five times in PMC, it basically is throughout the year. And that is only part of the thing and <laughs> there will be more. And um, that is for selection, that means it's a complete content well, um, in PMC. Uh, most journals put in the complete content or they put in certain level of content, those NIH funded so, or selected deposit. So it's very complicated. I will encourage you to go, go to PMC site to see the PMC selection process. Um, and then from 2008 onwards, PMC become the repository of public access policy of US NIH Welcome Trust in the UK and other funder. These policy require their grantee to deposit a copy of their final P review manuscript of their journal publication to PMC. Thus the corresponding citation will go to PubMed so that their content is widely distributed and freely available to the public. So about 0.3% of PubMed citation is about 100K citation. Uh, author manuscript. And there is no, there are no journal selection for this process of this group of citation. So as you can see, manuscript comes in PubMed every day. So, so, but that's not the whole journal, just that particular manuscript. So, so it, it can representation of different journal uh, every day. Um, so, so that's one part of it. And the second part of it, make it more complicated, is starting 2020. <laughs> Under NIH pilot project, PubMed also includes citation from some preprint servers like BioArchive. Bio and this scope was for NIH funded article uh, in, about COVID-19. Uh, at that time, we all want to distribute the information as soon as possible. So NIH decided to run this pilot to attract those uh, the new uh, the new uh, funding in co about COVID nineteen. So this process run until uh, last year June twenty 2020, uh, twenty 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 two, and this year um, NIH uh, expanded this preprint project to include all NIH funded um, research. Uh, starting January 2023, and currently um, about 12K preprint citation are in PubMed. Um, so I'll show you in the demo how to look at them and how to exclude them. Uh, that is the part that is, is not really published yet. So it, it you have to take care, you have to really know about it. And there are, and then for the books, and there are about 32K uh, citation come from the, uh, the books database. So you can see the selection process here. So, um, so after hearing this, then you, there was a question in a registration asking how your journal be indexed by PubMed. So the answer is a lot of way and also pretty
it complicated. <laughs> but if you want the cover to cover indexing, go for Medline and PMC's uh, journal selection. And then in the selection process, there is criteria being listed, uh, both technical and uh, uh, health uh, scientific merit. So um, as I said, the author manuscript is an interesting uh, corpus, uh, even though it's not a whole lot, but um, but kind of change the, the, the map line, change the PubMed uh, content base. So uh, first of all, uh, because the funding policy of the, the funder, they have a different scope. Um, we include funders from say like um, National Institution of Standard and Technology. So from there, there's a lot of their publication are in physical, electronic journal and I, IEEE, that kind of thing. And also uh, European um, Research Council, their scope is also much bigger. So in this example, from the soil organism, uh, obviously, it is not a traditional health sciences uh, journal. So in PubMed and PMC, uh, it will list it as uh, author's manuscript here, so you can look. And also another way to find out is from the search, click on the title. If you find that, oh, this is not a traditional health sciences journal, then you can check the search uh, NLM catalog. And then pull up the NL catalog, you can find out what is this journal. So you can say that, okay, it is an author manuscript in PMC only. So it's not indexed cover by cover, cover to cover. And, and also um, the collection stated is not really an NLM collection. Actually, a lot of people using um, existing in the NLM collection as a guide for them to select journal to publish. So, which is because journal collection uh, policy uh, of NLM collection is quite well regarded. So, so you want to kind of take a look at NL catalog to see these and then decide it from there. So it's interesting, it's like, it's not in NLM collection. So it's not all by by the NLM collection policy. So for preprint, uh, it is well, tag in PubMed and also in PMC. Uh, so it is, it's not yet been reviewed by any journal. So, uh, and also you also want to check the NM catalog and then you can see it is from the uh, server, uh, preprint server, which is square. Uh, NM, NM catalog had the index for the, for the uh, for the server and then telling you it's not indexed and not in catalog. So that's said, and by the way, the the file, uh, the preprint server will that you will see in PubMed will be from BioArchive, MedArchive, and Archive and Research Square. By the way, uh, individual user cannot submit uh, their preprint directly to PubMed. It has to go through this one of these five um five uh archive because they do it uh efficiently so coming to another area which is very important to you is uh assuming you are research for live user and also uh you want to go to permit to search and after you get you want to go to the full text so uh since full text is the ultimate goal of searching up by bibliographic database like PubMed. So um, uh, PubMed has a lot of links, as I said, to um, full text. And for the whole, the, all, the whole PubMed, about 31% of it is linked to free full text. Uh, uh, and then the, the rest, 44% uh, is is a tax that you probably need to, to pay, and then 25% without any full tax link. That is including uh, whole permit, which is from like 1800, as I said before. And then for those published from 2010 on for the past 22, 23 years, and 49% have links to free full tax. So kind of reflected what the open access movement changed. 
And for you, we search for live user, you are you are in good luck because uh, thanks to we search for live program access to uh, food food tax, which is uh, behind the paywall, uh, increase for you. Say for example, in this for all PubMed, uh, in addition to the thirty one free food tax links, thirty one percent free food tax link, uh, available to everybody. We search for live user will we'll have 35% more. So that would be 66% for the whole PubMed citation base. And then whereas for 2010 on, uh, the, the number increased uh, to, um, let me see, to like 88%, isn't it? 84%, so 49 times 34. So by all means, please use, uh, if you research for live user, you have a login, by all means, please uh, log in to use PubMed from Research for Life. So uh, I just show you and I'll show it in demo here. Uh, so how do you go to PubMed from Research for Life? Go to Content Portal, uh, go to Database and click P, and then you go to PubMed. And then what you know whether you are there or not is you can see the uh, the URL changes because they're going through your research for light instead of PubMed uh, .ncbi directly. So I'll show it in a content in a demo. Um, so what you will get is that you have a filter on the side. Uh, it's still called Hidari, but actually it means research for light, and which you can use in the filter bar, which you can narrow your search directly from there. But because the Hidari um, Filter doesn't include free food tax, so you want to use both, you know, both use both the free food tax and Hinari as well. And also in the abstract, you will have a research for life icon which link to 360 link, and then you can you can access free tax from there. So this is an example that in the MPG you will have problem in accessing uh, the food tax directly, but to go through research for life you could. So um, since 2020, uh, the changes, and there are a number of changes, uh, small tweak, I would say, um, to the PubMed uh, interface and functionality. And I listed here, and I listed all the links where you can find more information about each functionality. And I'm going to show it to you in the demo, each one of them. So I'm not going to check. Do it here. So um, there are other policy-wide changes which will affect PubMed in the coming years. Um, one of them is very important. I'm very excited. Really, will uh, we uh, right now the uh, NIH uh, public access policy has a one-year embargo, and then uh, the U.S. Uh, Office of Science Technology uh, last year they they have a memo and requesting their funding agency to update their public access policy no later than to the, uh, the end of 2025 to make the publication and supporting data resulting from all federally funded research publicly accessible with, without an, an embargo. So it's a game changer. So watch out for that. And I know that there are there are the, there are a lot of talking going on, and maybe some some legal <laughs> legal thing going on, and but it, it is some something worth uh keep an eye on because it will increase the uh, access to the free food tests from PubMed and data actual by that uh dramatic dramatically in a few years, and then in this year the NIH data management and, sh and sharing policy also changed. And, and expected to, uh, for anybody seeking NIH research funding, which might include you because NIH research funding actually open to researcher for researcher worldwide. Um, so you can, you have to put out a research uh, management, the data management plan and the sharing plan. So after you put it in, you will have to uh, 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 comply with it. So not just put in a plan, you have to actually see it. Say, for example, you said that you will share your data 
uh, how many days, how many period after the research is complete, and you have to do it. So uh, that's a part of the funding requirement. So going both way, one is the first one is the publication only, but you share the data after publication. Here is you might even share the data before publication if you describe it that way. All right, another noteworthy changes is on the searching, which I also show it to you later. Uh, life uh, is proximity searching. And a lot of people said that, oh, PubMed uh, ne never really have phrase search, really phrase search and proximity search. And this year we come up with it. <laughs> so it's really good. Um, so it's relatively new, very exciting, and hopefully will improve your capability. But by all means, this is supplemental. It should not be used as the first pass of the search. It will, I'll go back to the searching best practice. Permit NLM never suggest you to go with this kind of search right away, it, you should, unless you're doing finding specific item. So for topical search, you really should kind of explore it first, but that's our touch base. But for the proximity search, you can uh, enter search in multiple terms in any order, by the way, it will not, you cannot specify the order. You, you specify your search term in any order and they will search in any order. You cannot say, I have to do hip pain. I don't want pain hip. No, it doesn't work that way either. So any term, uh, any number of terms here in any order. And you specify the field that it is you want to search on. Uh, for now, only title, title abstract, and affiliation field. For affiliation field is very interesting. It is just added, which is very important if you want to do bibliography for your organization. Uh, how to do in PubMed is through affiliation field. And then as you know, People put in, there is no control vocabulary for affiliation just yet. So you will have to, you can use it to kind of put, to catch all. So like putting in any order in any variety of form of name, then you can catch them all. And then N is the distance, uh, is the word, number of words, not the number of character, number of words that appear between ter the search term. Uh, for affiliate, uh, it's between zero to N. For title and title abstract, the N is unlimited, but you will see why you do N is unlimited because it's more you do is just it, it defeat the purpose of proximity searching. But for the affiliation field, you can only do N equal, uh, equal or less than 1,000. So uh, this is an example. We'll do some something, you know, we'll do some demo. So uh, this kind of search will turn off automatic term mapping, which I will touch on, and it's not compatible with terms like uh, truncation. Those are limits. So that's why I said it should be you use it for refine your search rather than as a first get go unless you're looking for a specific item. And you can combine the search with other terms and other search actually with Boolean operator. So here's a list of reference and including tutorial and stuff. As a matter of fact, today there's NLM uh, update <laughs> in a, later uh, today. Um, another one which is behind the scene, but is quite important actually for me, especially for you to search mesh, mesh terms and or you do like a systematic review stuff, which usually we'll use on mesh term is transition to automatic indexing last year. And right now, um, it is a long process. NLM has been using, uh, the mesh industry has been using uh, some AI algorithm to help them to index all along since like 2010 or so. Uh, but since last year, it's all automatic. And if you find any problem, uh, you don't like what you see so far, you can write to NLM because algorithm is life, is organic. So um, as any AI algorithm is based on, uh, for them, they're using it called medical 
tax index or auto is the accurate thumb is pattern matching pattern matching between the uh the term from the title and the abstract that they use with the type match term from related permit record which was indexed by human before is we call it the learning corpus so that has a lot of tricking. It could treat all the time. So your feedback is actually helping them to improve the algorithm. The reason why they need to do it is that they want to provide uh, mesh indexing for MATLINE citation within 24 hours after it appears in PubMed. So um, citation in PubMed actually like twice a day. It's millions of citations. That's horrible. I mean, no, I should say horrible. It's so fast. And it come in and it's go, uh, it, I think they, they switch the production database to the stating database at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. So citation comes in very quickly, but they're not indexed quickly. And in the past, sometimes some citation, some journal, which is not highly important, could like months, could take months for them to have mesh, mesh indexing, which is not good. So with the automatic indexing, it, it really turned around really fast. And I look at it recently, it's really fast. So it's really good for searching, actually expand the, uh, the things. Um, but one thing is right now they are used the, the algorithm using uh, title and abstract, whereas in the past, the human would go to full text. So um, there might be change in the coming years and because they are a publisher allowing NLM to use their full text even though they are not free, freely available, they, they allow NLM to index. So I think there are some major publisher like Springer widely allow them to do it. I'm not surprised Elsevier will be in it too. So, but anyway, the, the that's down the road, but that is something to look for. And um, so it is tagged, this kind of citation, uh, and then you can search it like using this corpus. And there's about 5 million now for that. Oh, by the way, the author can also, uh, if you want to suggest mass term as an author, you can try to put it in a keyword field um, so that the, you can, if you know the mesh term you want your citation or your full text to be indexed under, you can put it in the keywords because a lot of publishers allow keywords and you can use the mesh term as keywords, then it will be picked up because it's an abstract and and the and the yeah and the citation. So those so those will be picked up. So that's a way that you can kind of inform NLM what term you want to use. Um uh, coming back to search in general. So um in general, uh, we we want you to the best practice um, as one of one of you have asked the for and I suggest by NLM is that you want to be use specific concept because PubMed is indexed or MATLINE is indexed in with a specific concept. So um, say for example, if you're talking about pet breast cancer, use breast cancer. Do not use cancer because uh, it because of the medical subject heading is a tree light. You don't want to think which is irrelevant. So, and you want to save time in your search. So uh, no punctuation because it will be thrown out and no, no little operator because uh, the, the ATM process will process it, capitalize, and then there's some phase searching. And if you do all these, it will turn off the thing. So let's permit do the work. So um, there's a lot of little AI algorithm going on in PubMed all along, you know. It's just not generative AI like ChatGPT, but it's just helping the process. One thing of it is citation sensor. A lot of people search PubMed to find a specific citation. So if you know of any particular uh, a citation you want to find out in PubMed and then just plug in the, uh, the citation element like author last name, the journal name, 
the year and uh and some subject if you want to some subject work do you want to uh but i think uh these are the three terms that you should use free aspect of time to use it use and then will trigger the citation sensor because the citation sensor will pick that up um the algorithm will pick it up so once it's pick it up it will be replied by this in yellow up there and saying that you found citation with three uh with citation matching then you can select from there and of course your rest of your search will still listed down below um another frequently used search people use PubMed for is search by author and uh the most comprehensive of search by author name, first initial, uh, because PubMed has a long history or MedLine has a long history. So um, only uh, the, pub, the in author index only go back to 1946 and the full name only start index in 2002. So uh, if you want to be most comprehensive, would we'll be using last name and first initial will give you the most kind of good combination of specificity uh, and the uh, and the coverage. Um, so talking about AI again, <laughs> uh, because it's so important kind of search. So PubMed uh came up with something called a little bit of algorithm to help people to do it. So um, one can put in any common name form. So in this case, I put in Anthony Fauci, which is uh, Dr. Fauci's full name. He is he was the he works with the uh as an ASAR back in the co I'm sorry ASAR not ASAR he's very prominent in infectious disease and he worked in the COVID nineteen uh committee with the White House uh up to last year I think he retired now from NIH so if you do this and you only have three hundred and forty six results which doesn't look, look right but anyway you are using this to pull up a citation which you think might be belong to him. And COVID-19 definitely is one. So you go over there and go to affiliation field and then verify the uh, uh, connection. Then you click that the auth and then you search on author name, then you come up with, uh, and then the change, the PubMed will change the word name, the name format to the, the most comprehensive uh, name format is his last name and two initial, which a lot of people don't know his first in, uh, middle initial. So AS, and then uh, it's also telling you that it is by the computer author sort. And it's only a sort, it's not limit the search. It's only the first one, the most relevant will flow on top. And then uh, it will sort by computer author. And then uh, there won't be uh, the timeline available in here, which usually available in uh, PubMed. And, and this is the result. And the other very important thing would be the search or uh, detail, which is um, we when, when you put in a search into PubMed, it will kind of pass it from left to right and throw out uh, start word and punctuation and normalize it uh, with lowercase anyway. So don't bother with upper lowercase. And then we'll translate. Um, then it will kind of put your search term through a automatic term mapping process. If you don't specify few, if you specify few and we'll start all those process. And then if you want to find out, actually we encourage everybody to after you search, you always go to advanced page and look at the, under the search uh, builder, there is a history and search detail. Look at the search detail. You can see in this case, go to the detail. You can see uh, there's a warning because they throw out the start word, the word in here, and then translate the two concepts into both the match term and also developing countries term. So in this way, you don't have to know uh, which term is match term. Uh, in the past, I remember when I was <laughs> start working and I would search uh, match first and then find the match term and search. And with this, 
you don't have to. You can search and try to get the close match term and then play with it. And it's actually much faster. So automatic term mapping um, is the process to manipulate uh, the pass term, the specific pass term that you put in. And what they do is just imagine that your, all your term will be thrown into a conveyor belt. It's one way conveyor, it will not go back. It start with subject, then journal, then author, three translation tables. First one is subject translation table. Then it is basically going through uh, a lot of mapping, especially for mesh. And here I'm not talking the whole thing about mesh because there is a there is a suite of tutorial on mesh. Just a brief introduction to you. Mesh is used in PubMed and also NM catalog and also used in many 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 indexes and libraries throughout the world. So it's very important to SARS control vocabulary. It is changed every year and it represents terms um, as a tree-like structure, like each concept is the leaves and then um, it will have the root is the broadest concept and then go to the leaf in, in the more and more specific. And then searching PubMed in MASH is automatically explode. That means you search cancer, well, we will map by the process to go to neoplasm. And then we'll go to and include all the thing underneath it. So that's the beauty of it. But that's also may create a lot of noise. That's why we stress on specific rather than generic, un unless you couldn't find things. So um, uh, they change every year. The mesh uh, heading come out in the fall. Actually, they, actually, they probably come out next month. And then the uh, PubMed database will, will have this EM processing in December, and then we'll move to the new uh, thesaurus. And then the term, the old term will stay there. And then the any new term which can be mapped, it will be mapped, but if cannot be mapped, we'll just stay there. Um, uh, so it's a yearly thing, it's a big deal. Um, if you have any uh, suggestion for MASH, you're not happy with the MASH term available, write to NLM. They are really, really receptive for chain, uh, uh, ideas. Um, so uh, in this uh, term mapping, they also will throw out, they will map the uh, singular and plural term and then also take care of American and British English and also map the drug blend name to generic term like Libertor versus the um, atrovastatin, and they also use UMLS to map your term because UMLS has many, many other thesaurus like uh, SNOMED and current procedure terminology. If you put in some term which could be in pub in MASH, but uh, but but there's no like synonym term. Syn oh, by the way. MASH has headings, subheadings, supplementary concept, entry term, which are synonyms, and then publication type and that kind of stuff. So uh, if you put in a term which cannot be mapped using this, and they will use UML as to for map. So that say, for example, is one of the term is a shin bong, and actually it is a in MASH is tibia. Uh, but 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 in the synonym, uh, in the entry term, Shinbong is not one of them. But then somehow, if you put in Shinbong in PubMed, uh, they will, the algorithm will map it for you using uh, and, uh, using UMLS. So this is telling you this, uh, um, it's just example of a page of the entry term. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a descriptor and entry term and subheading. And also telling you that another group is called supplementary concept, which is will be update year uh, throughout the year. It is used usually to use to catch some chemical names and uh, drugs and uh, rare disease and that kind of thing. But in COVID-19, it really helpful because COVID-19 kind of appear in the middle of the year. Uh, NLM could not catch up in the mesh, um, in the mesh. So COVID-19 was the supplementary concept.
for a long time. And then uh, now some uh, the COVID-19 breakthrough infection was the supplementary concept, but then in 2023, for the 2023 match, they decided that instead of make, promote this into the descriptor, the main term, they decided to break it into two concepts, like COVID-19 already in the uh, main concept, and then the breakthrough infections. So what you do, you can combine the two terms, but they still use keep this as supplementary concept for backward compatibility. The second uh, stop would be the, the journal translation table, which basically for people who do uh, citation search or that you want to pull all the journal together. So all these form, by the way, uh, the MEDLINE title is 5280, but PubMed, uh, the translation table consists of the like 40,000 uh, journal title. This link will tell you, will show you that. And 44, 40,444 right now. It because PubMed, as I said, in what's in PubMed is actually there's so many like author manuscript and stuff. There's actually many, many title there. And the third one will be the author translation table which I talk about a little bit, but then I uh, just want to highlight the investigator uh, index, which is uh, available 2008. So um, so in this way, the cl collaborator and investigator, which is not the author, can be a knowledge as well. So turn off uh, ATM is by doing quotation mark, put down search tag or user advanced builder. So um, I want to highlight a little bit before uh, proximity searching coming along, uh, PubMed can have some sort of phase searching, but the phase searching is not really, is using a phase uh, index, which you can see, you know, in title abstract, chest pain, you can see the, how many terms are there. So, we always encourage people to go to advanced search builder. If you want to do a phase index before you search, you search here first. Look at it here first and look at the index to see how many are there. So it's really worthwhile to use that term or not. So, uh, but uh, and I am also very receptive for adding phrase and because things change, so you can ask them to, how about using this phrase and they will add, add it to the phrase index table. So uh, going to, and then I am running out of time. And basically this is PubMed homepage is very, has a lot of material uh, about user's guide is super. And then I just want to point out here, clinical queries is utilized the filter that we uh, put out by ex expert and then um, kind of like uh, categorize some popular searching in, uh, in, in uh, like COVID-19 uh, for PubMed, like can search rather than going to the big database and also have those in you try to build something then you can use utility and that kind of things. And uh, to keep up with PubMed, use the page uh, New Worthy, subscribe to it or just subscribe to the technical bulletin. Technical bulletin has a wider scope including any NLM stuff, but PubMed change is always there. So do this, you might get more noise when do this more specific. And then all this guy, more than you want, a lot of classes, you can sign in. Even you cannot go to the class, the recordings available all the time. Actually, honestly, I use a lot of their stuff <laughs> to come up with this. Okay. I stop by searching for now. And then I hope to go to and other one. I want to share my screen for PubMed. So, okay, so I can do demo. All right, so why is it like that? I cannot see. <laughs> okay, so we're in PubMed. I want to draw your attention to the URL. I come in through Research for Life. Content here, database, uh, P, PubMed. 
and but I did it an hour ago. I hope it still work. <laughs> so with that, and you can come to PubMed with this particular URL, which is different. Okay. So you can see. Am I see bro? Yeah. Something wrong? Mm. Okay. What should I do? Oh, oh I mean. I'll go back again. Database. The pistol. Hi, Kathy. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, the Research for Life website has been slow, even okay. yesterday. Yeah. yeah it was okay. So um, I probably will skip what I plan to say. I'll go to Pumat directly then. To, to illustrate searching. Then you can see is that just Pumat and NCBI now. So uh, hopefully it will come back. So just want to show you the... And actually I would like to even sign in through um, to my thing. Because I can mimic, <laughs> mimic the, the usage. Yes, you see, I sign in because in my NCBI, I can mimic, I can activate the filter. This is just filter. And then uh, I can pull in icon. So this is just like it. I'll show you how to do it later. So, um, so here I want to show is advanced. So this, go to advanced page and uh, so, oh yeah. So you can see the warning and how the term are being interpreted. And the beauty of it, you can cut and paste. You can copy this. If you are doing um, systematic review searching, you need to uh, document all the algorithm. So this is how you do it easily. And I also show you, uh, if you want like title abstract, this is all the thing that prompt. And I want like, uh, I was just doing the term. So I want to see whether it is a good face that I can see show index, there's a lot. But this is breast cancer. But then if you do it, it's 339. But if I do, if I do breast cancer here, which which I didn't tag it, then I do a search. I will just add to history instead of going back and forth. Then uh, That's interesting. Wouldn't let me do it. Oh, want me to do it this way? That's interesting. I thought I can override it. No, I can't. Um, okay, coming back here. So this is how, how you do it. And then um, I promise to tell you the what changes had to be. The changes include um, 
the navigation on top of the page, which you specify display option 10 page per page, or you can change it here. And then, and then also in the bottom, that's one changes they have. And the other thing is that if you have a long uh, result, you kind of like when you're in the middle of it, you select this and then this option to output is floated for you directly. So you don't have to remember going back and forth, you know, where to do, what to do. So there's another change. And this is relatively new before uh, it was under the display option, the short buy. The short buy becomes very important. Uh, by the way, it moved to best match, which is again, the AI stuff. Uh, they use the uh, the search term that people put in and compare with your search term and then saying, yeah, this is relevant for your search. So, um, but you can always override it by most reason. By the way, most reason is most reason time that enter into PubMed. But because PubMed can put in citation, which is older citation. So if you really want those published newer, you use publication day and by first author and that kind of things. Let me see what else you have for um for the update. That's about it for the, oh, the summary display is, yeah, if you, it's like 1.2K character of the author now. So it, it affect too little, so you might not want to, I just want to show you one which is that long. This is the, I know it's my still. Yeah, it's like on oh, no, and no, on no, and no, on no, and no. on. You don't want to see it. By the way, this is not. Um, is in the summary. The truncation is in the summary. Truncation to one point two k, but this is abstract. So, and I cannot select abstract here because because it's just one citation by default is abstract. Um. Okay, for functionality, I want to show you the filter. The filter is very important in PubMed um, because you can really tag the changes here. Uh, before, a lot of people like uh, uh, the core index journal, uh, the nursing journal, and that kind of thing. At one point, NIM support those. But now they remove all those subject category. If you remember, go to additional filter. There was a time there was a subject here to kind of um, select a group of journal, but they removed it. So what they kept um, under long debate, <laughs> they removed it. And then only available right now is the other uh, which is you can exclude preprints, which I said, um, even though it's 12K, it might have a potential to grow. If you want to remove all those uh, not peer review journal, which is not we're going to be, may not be published. So you can use this. And then you can also use this here to restrict your search to MetLine. So this become important. And article type is also so article type. If you want to search systematic review, you can. Um, there's all sorts of systematic reviews here. I think. I thought systematic review is here. Technical report. Hmm. Oh, systematic review now is already rise out here because of importance. The, the article type, which is always very highly used are up there, and then additional filter is in addition to that. Um, species, some people like do human, non-human, and that kind of thing. Just, and by the way, you select here just to show it, and you still have to select it. 
article language is one which is good one to use for limit. And also if you're doing search for uh, like uh, Spanish, some group, then you want to search it. By the way, I already said this, about 13% of PubMed citation is from non-English. And actually PubMed Central right now is taking in journal, which is in Spanish as well. So if you want <laughs> to enter PubMed, and you can enter through PMC <laughs> and PMC taken um, before for a long time, it only take English journal and now they take, um, they take both Spanish and English. Um, sex, age, other. So these are the, yeah, those are, these are the other. Yeah. Okay. It's a very interesting, uh, Actually, some of the search you gave me, and I'm actually using it, and I can really tap into it. By the way, as I said, it is not gonna, it's not gonna activate. You you click it, it's gonna just show it here. So that's it for for the changes functionality. Okay, proximity searching. So we can do this. Just take a look. And I have no filter. I clear selection, exit, do it here. So I am this is one of the examples which was this new. And it going into affiliation field, by the way, in the slide. For the title, uh, for the field name, you can use full name, like affiliation, or you can use AD, it's the same which is A-D-T-A, T-A-I-A-B. It saves you a lot of typing. So you got this, then you cannot really see it because in affiliation field, so you go in and then go in affiliation right here. Then it's Hopkins, Bloomberg, Public. So I think is in this case, they are looking for the Bloomberg School of Public Health uh, in Johns Hopkins, but they have no idea how would it appear because I said affiliation, there is no control vocabulary. I know all kids is trying to come up with this. They came up with this organization, ORCID, but as I said, even searching author, uh, there are not that many ORCID. If you search author using Orchid ID in PubMed, you miss a ton. Basically, don't do it at this point. I mean, it, it is it's just to then illustrate a point, but but it's not gonna give you comprehensive results. So in this case, uh, somebody wants to search thing publish, um, doing some sort of profiling for the school. So they they saying, okay, Hopkins, Bloomberg, Public. So thinking that this will cover, this should be there. Um, then, then you do, they do have a pretty good result. So you can see all those terms uh, everywhere. And then if you do um, hip pain, um, EIAP, and I want zero. I don't want any changes. I mean, I don't want any um, word in between. So I got hip pain, hip pain. Hip pain mostly is good, but I might got pain hip. Oh, by the way, this highlight is controlled by my NCBI, how you highlight the search term. So you go to my NCBI for it. So, yeah. Uh, I want to show you a citation sensor, which I have basically, which I illustrate. So right there. So you, you want to say, say somebody else maybe um, 
I don't know. I'm stuck with this. <laughs> Quan. Any Quan? Oh, hey. <laughs> Not me, but interesting. I'm surprised. Right here. <laughs> I'm just playing, okay? One. Yeah, one is a center for emergency medicine. So then you just um search the name right here. So it's computer author so you got more. So it's a good way to do it. And uh citation sensor author. Okay, I'm going to the question that you guys uh thanks for you to show me. Kathy. Yes. We have a whole series on searching. There are some okay. original questions which you may or may not get to. But I think you should focus on these searching questions. Uh, okay. I'm a bit confused. I thought quotes were used for exact phrases. So why did Kathy specify uh, zero word when searching for hip pain? Because I'm it's positive sure that... searching. That's the functionality of positive searching. Okay. If you want, so uh, there are two things here. One is proximative searching. The other one is, let me go to the thing here. Um, this is proximative searching. So I can do zero, I can do one, I can do two, I can do n. Depends on how specific you want. Okay. Um, but I I can search it as a phrase. If I just want to search this as a phrase, and what I do because in PubMed there is no phrase searching per se, the only phrase searching available would be using the phrase index. So I do title abstract, I do hip pain, and then I show index. And I see, okay, I got this. And compared to this, it's a different thing. Understand? So because PubMed, before proximity searching, they only use phrase index. So they will index a phrase each time people uh, say that, oh, this is important, let me do it. Then after a certain procedure, and then they will add it to that. From that point on, all the PubMed citation, title abstract, blah, 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 and they will index this phrase, okay? So if you change a bit, say like here, you also do three week, three, three year, that kind of things. So before I always ask you to do, always come here to do, to type in your face in the field that you want and show index and see whether it is there or not. Because sometimes um, in other databases, they will just use it as a phrase to search interactively. In PubMed, it was not the case, and it's still not the case if you quote it. If you do um, like this, hit paint without anything, it will turn off ATM and will not go to proximity searching. It will search face index. Let me show you. I thought it tur I turned it on, right? That's interesting. So now it doesn't turn off. Let me let me go back. There's something not quite right. By doing quotation, I should turn it off. Okay, now it's good. Now it's now it's seven oh five. It is the term that I I saw in show index. So apparently, if I do it here, it might kind of confuse because it looks like it's kind of searching as if I'm doing kind of remember me doing this. So maybe you need to clean it. 
But that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. It is the phrase searching, using phrase index. And whereas proximity searching is the algorithm is you have to do something like this. I'm going back, this is the algorithm. And then I can do one or two that make it more inclusive. I will change the result. Well, at least, I mean, from zero to two, actually. So the zero, you know, you can see double the, the result. So, so did I answer the question? There's a related question here. Can you search multiple term with proximity, e.g. hip pain management? Uh, what do you want? Pain management? Hip pain management. Then how many term you want in between them? Two, three, uh... zero, one. Because remember, this is not a phase. So it could you could come up with management of hip pain. You can come up with hip management pain, pain management hip. You know, it's different from phrase searching, it's proximity searching in any order. Yeah. I I really running out of time, and I think this is relatively yeah. new. I really encourage you go to the slides, go through the tutorial. And they have a lot, NLM has a lot of tutorial, uh, interactive on demand tutorial about this. And basically the main thing is you don't want to mix proximity searching with phrase searching. Phrase searching in PubMed is searching phrase index. It's only for certain index, certain phase. If you want more phrase to go in, tell them. If the proximity searching, and then you, you can come up you can do one thousand well, two thousand actually. There are a couple of quick ones you might be able to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes when you add many filters, you don't get any results. How do you deal with that? And there's one about can you search remove for filter. articles? Excuse me. We remove, remove the filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remove well, the filters. Well, in the, in the question you sent me actually. Um, I think generically what you do, you type in your search, um, you first identify key concepts, specific concept, and then just type it in, in, in random words. Don't do a whole phrase because they will have to pass it anyway. So, and then try to be specific what you want and then, and then look at the result and then try to uh, look at the term the, in, the, in the research and the result, uh, the match term, and also uh, pull out some article that you see, and then you build from there. So that is a, the practice that I would do, and that and a lot of people would do. And if there's too many filter, you're basically killing yourself, <laughs> and then you just release it. Releasing is just not not as important. It's just like in searching, if too many things. There are a couple of people talking about, oh, I put in all these, but I have nothing. Then you just release it. Release it to be like, uh, yeah, we release it so that, yeah, searching so that it will improve it. And some of the term you, you can use filter to uh, instead of searching, you can use a filter. Say, for example, uh, the the uh, the certain disease in dog. Then you come up with, you know, elbow disease in dog. Then and you you put it. Go to advanced page and go to result and select a match citation and then uh, and then look up the match there. I found out the advanced page is very good for looking up at match term which if you don't want to, to um, look it up beforehand. Okay, this one I think is a quick answer and then one that's impossible. One is the 
questions are together. Can I search articles from one journal in PubMed? And then they ask for a demonstration on conducting systematic research for systematic reviews, which I don't think you have the time for. But if you no, actually, on... I'm not an expert on that. I refer them to the webinar last, last, last month. That is systematic review. Go back to the web, uh, the Research for Life page. Look at that webinar. That's a great yeah, webinar. A, I learned a lot. There's a good uh, video and a good uh, presentation yeah. right there. Right, right. Uh, and by the way, PubMed is like one of the must-do database for systematic review because it's available and because it's very transparent because of the search, you really, they really tell you what they do with it. So that's really important to document the, the search step that you go. Searching a journal is very easy and you just go to journal field, do an advanced uh, journal, type in a field. Science, New England Journal of Medicine. You first, you want to show index again to see which one is the correct term and that kind of thing. Oh, by the way, they just change it before uh, they don't index the uh, article, the, and before like New England Journal of Medicine and the New England Journal of Medicine make different results, but now they know, so, so it's good. So like here, phrase index, good. So you can just go back and then just, just search it. Okay. Here Would it still be effective to search using the entire topic? And I think you answered that. It may get too complicated and then you have to simplify it. Well, it is, you have to specific, be specific. And you yes. can throw it in. There's, I mean, it's free, it's fast. You. You can throw it in and then and you know what you get. And then usually the best thing to do is you want to explore it, just throwing it in the concept, specific concept. You can put in as many as possible. If you find something good, then look at this, look at the list and then uh, pull out thing that which is relevant and then look, look at their term from there. And the second thing you would do is if you don't find enough or finding too much, find too much, you filter it. Review English article, review article, uh, last few years is always a, a things to do, to just limit it to, to, the goal is find something relevant. You think this is the trend to go. Then you look at that term, how to do that term, what filter to use, and then you, and then you add it in and you map it out and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's iterative process. This is about PubMed, it's not about searching. I'm here just showing you the possibility is filter is a, one of the best things that PubMed has, which I can say uh, is almost no rifle in the, in the field. <laughs> and then and, the content and... too, the content too. But because of- someone asked about clinical trial and I see that they could just right use that filter. Yes, correct. Right here. There's no yep. time to do a search. You may want to do a search in Well, clinical place. trial is, is easy. You just do it as a publication type. So so that's why I, I have to say, go to PubMed, two things you have to use all the time. First of all, going to food tests, going to research for life, that kind of stuff. Always do advance, always look at search detail, look what have been done to your term. And the second thing is always use filter, always, always. Yeah, this is not so much question, but a, a suggestion. Should a searcher first log into PubMed into the account in order to save searches to collections? And I think that's the answer to that is yes, if you want if to you save want to. the searches. You yep. have to open your account, and I did Say for put, a so sample. Now I can I can create a search alert right there because yeah. I log in. And I think uh, there was a request which I answered about uh, how to set up an account, and I put the URL in for that. Okay. Actually, um, I want to show you one thing: is to remember, I log in my account. I can basically recreate this. We can the icon 
And what you do, you, you, you log into your icon, you go to the dashboard, and then uh, you can do filter, and then you can select Hinary filter. There's an option in my NCI filter, and the other one is site preference, um, PubMed preference, the filter and icon that you want to, what kind of icon you want to show. And also uh, the outside tool, which is a link, which can link to your resolver. If your school has resolver, then you can link it. This is Hinary resolver. And then uh, all the information is on and then the, the display summary and that kind of stuff. So yeah, my NCBI is another game to play. <laughs> Um, don't but think we related. quite have time. Now it's we're getting into uh, less search question. Okay, Mamoon, our colleague, asked, sometimes full text articles are not available if we go through R4L from the PubMed platform. Mm -hmm. uh, can DocLine help you? DocLine is a separate thing. They, uh, if you have agreement with them, you could, but I think... Um, I don't know how they deal with uh, international user now. And uh, you can always write to them. Yeah, but but because the scope of US NLM is US. <laughs> so uh, so in within US, it's a tremendous great network to do. And I think um, right now, a lot of, uh, I'm an MLA member and I belong to International Collaboration Caucus. And people there are quite nice. If you want an article, you can write there and then they might fill it for you. Yeah, so Kathy, it, because it's still- Go mm -hmm. ahead. Can no, you... I'm just saying that uh, doing kind of interlibrary loan using PDF is allowed in a lot of journals, so. So, uh, I mean, you can go to your colleague instead of going to National Library of Medicine. And I, last time I heard, uh, in the past, there was some, some uh, regional library in a different country, a representative, but that seemed to be all gone away. In the past, each, each kind of each like country or continent has some dot line center, Mettler center, but that's gone away because PubMed has been so worldwide. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's a suggestion for the future. Uh, will there be a chance to have a hands-on search exercise under the guidance of the facilitator? Now, we don't have time for that today, but that's I a... don't know. I don't know. That, yeah. that will be a... Uh, because that is a really, really, uh, you know, Research hasn't separate... done those because it's it. I think I will refer you to National Library of Medicine (NLM). They really have a lot of searches. They the the training of them are so superb, and then they also have exercise there. And take that because it's all free. Anybody yes. can register it. I took I took it. I took them actually. I took them to to keep up oh. abreast. So uh, I think research for light, uh, is this unfair for PubMed? Uh, just do PubMed uh, because there are so many of them. And I will refer back to the really expert from the producer, in this case, NLM, or maybe for like Web of Science or for Elsevier, whatever, and will be them. So yeah, I, I don't know you have, have, to, have to say. huh? You have several thanks for talking about the capitalization not being needed and no Boolean operators. And people appreciate knowing that they can just go in and put the terms in and forget things we've done for 30, 40 years. Okay. Yes. Uh, there's a one thing, one, how can one benefit from full text of a searched article? And that gets into reading the abstract. And if it's really relevant, then you want the full text. Did right. you want to add anything right. to that? Uh... Right. So actually, uh, it was deliberate to not show so much abstract in the summary because they want you, and then deliberate that the full text link is from the abstract page. Yeah. 
because so that's just so that you read kind of a little a, bit and and then and there's a lot of link on the abstract page as well yeah so that's yeah. the process that you go through to see if you really want to read the article exactly uh exactly. does here we go we're almost at the top of the questions uh mm. does the 24-hour turnaround in ai indexing mean that there are very few in process records now I'm yep. wondering about, yes, whether yep. to continue running a progress ahead of print, PubMed, top-up search to supplement Medline via Ovid. Let me see. Should I read that more slowly or you're just... I know, I, I see what you mean. Okay. okay, I should clear that. Because pub status, a hell of print is... It's a different thing. It's a different animal. That has nothing to do with indexing. It could be MASH too, actually. Do you know you can do all this? <laughs> you don't have to do filter, you just search it. I just try to find a... Maybe they didn't do it yet. That's wrong then. How come Medline SP? Maybe it's the, the journal is Medline, so they count it even though they are not indexed yet. So um in process, in process, how is it prop status in process? I don't remember. I'm sorry. No, it cannot be. Okay, there's one uh, quick question from the beginning from our colleague Mamoon, uh, who mm -hmm. says it's very in what you discussed is very informative informative to him. Is PMC allowed to accept manuscripts from other international funding agencies? And I think the answer is, to that is yes, because you did mention some other funding agencies. Well, accepting funding agency has to have, is go through Palm Central International. And at this point, there's only UK PMC and Europe PMC, uh, the sponsor. So it's only funder uh support by them because it's a lot of process to do that it's not easy and um because of the resources available at one point we have we have canada but canada couldn't keep it up so they withdraw on it it is the pmc do it pmc do it for us funder uh or international funder but then uh, Europe, done by Europe PMC. And then at one point, Canada has it. And also there are talk about Korean and that kind of thing. But 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 those are very uh, difficult process to set up a PMC in another country. So um, no, I don't, I haven't heard of anything about it. Okay, yeah. well, we have gone the other thing you could do is to get NIH funding. It doesn't have to be US researcher. NIH funding goes to, you'll be surprised how wide they go to. Okay, well, we, as I said, we're at 90 minutes, 91 yep. minutes, and we appreciate the overview the demonstration and the answering of some very interesting questions in the Q and A that I could, we could just not reply to the person. So uh, we want to thank you. I appreciate all the participants that stayed with us through the end. Yeah. And this will be available very soon on the webinar page, both the video and the presentation. Yeah, uh, again, do look at the presentation. There are tons of links there. And, and actually, if you want to learn, is starting with those uh, uh, those classes that I've been quoting. Uh, I basically put links on everything. So 
So it will be your study material, reference material in the future, should you want to know more about PubMed and uh, everything actually. And that for that matter, PMC. Actually, by the way, going through PMC is probably, a lot of people kind of thinking it's probably as a better way or lower bar <laughs> to go into PubMed. A lot of people, we should start recording. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote me on that, because the uh, the PMC uh, PMC does require XML full text submission, whereas PubMed doesn't. But now PubMed always do uh, the citation submission as a requirement for going into MATLINE. So go, you cannot really if you want to go into PubMed, doing electronic submission is almost a must. So actually, you guys were talking about the um, journal, J-O-N-L, you know, those kind of thing. Uh, there was a, a project, it's African Journal Partnership, and that those journals going through, going to Medline. And they always kind of start with PMC. So, I mean, if you are a journal, like related to a journal, you want to get into uh, PubMed, uh, you don't want to just go to Medline and PM look at the PMC selection process. Then you will know. Then you know, it's actually a lot of people did that. All right. Thank you, Kathy, and please follow up with the suggested links she has because I know she has listed quite a number that would uh, enable you to go beyond just listening to the webinar here. Appreciate Bye. it. And uh, as I said, look at the webinar page of Research for Life and everything will be there very soon, we hope. Usually our turnaround is pretty good. So yeah. thank you again for participating. And Kathy, thank you for, uh, we all learn so much every time you present. That's the truth. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. It's, uh, yes, thank you. you do. And then hope that it will learn something. <laughs> That's right. Yes, all we right. all learned something and we appreciate your time and the detail. All right, okay. good. Okay, thank you everyone. And we're going to sign off here. Thank and, you. Uh,